Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at lesson two, stationary points. You're going to be learning how to use the derivative to find critical points of extrema, extrema means minimum and maximum, relative and absolute, and points of inflection. So as usual, we'll start with some vocabulary. A stationary point of a function is a point where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're going to write f prime of x is equal to zero. A global minimum is the minimum value of y in the entire domain Point A is a global minimum in the graph below. So let's take a look at point A. So this graph is going to be an example of what we're looking at. So we have a, a global minimum represented by point A. A local minimum has a turning point where f prime of x equals 0. And the curve shape has an upward u. And in this case, point C is a local minimum. All right, so we have point A as a global minimum. All right, and then we have point C is a um, local minimum. So just so you can see the difference. A global maximum is the maximum value of y in the entire domain. All right, and in this case, point D, point D is a global maximum. Now notice this um, doesn't have arrows on the ends of the graph. It, it literally starts at x equals negative 5, and it ends at x equals 6. So we're going to just make a note here that point D is a global maximum. A local maximum in this graph has a turning point where the derivative is equal to 0. And the graph has a downward U shape. And in this case, point B is a local maximum. All right. A stationary inflection, or an IB word for this, and I just wanted to make a note of this, uh, inflexion. A stationary inflection or inflexion is a point where the curve changes its curvature or shape. The tangent at a point of inflection is always horizontal. All right, and if we know that we have a horizontal tangent, we know that our slope is equal to zero because the slope of a horizontal line is equal to zero. All right, so there's our vocabulary. We're going to take a look at just a little bit more demonstration of what I'm talking about here. In calculus, we will commonly use sign diagrams for the derivative to determine the nature of a stationary point. So we're already familiar with sign diagrams because of what we did in lesson one. And we were using sign diagrams to help us determine increasing and decreasing intervals. We're also going to now use the sign diagrams to help us indicate um, whether or not we have a maximum or a minimum or a stationary inflection point. And we have some examples there. And we're going to look at um, some more examples in this little box below. So it says... When we have a local maximum, and I just want you to just go ahead and draw a couple of sign diagrams here. We're going to need one sign diagram here, one here, and we're going to need uh, two in this box just to get ourselves ready. All right, so if we have a local maximum, right, if, if we were to look at this graph above, Look what's happening. We're 
we've got an increasing interval and then a decreasing interval at a local maximum. So we would look at our value and we're calling that we're calling the critical value A here because we're trying to say that this is going to be true for any graph for any critical value. If the function is increasing and then decreasing, we know that we have a local maximum. So we have this situation. And at A, right, it makes sense. We're saying that we are increasing, right? and then decreasing. All right, the next one is a local minimum. All right, that's gonna be the opposite. We're gonna be decreasing. If you look at this graph above, just as another example, we're decreasing before the minimum, and then we're increasing after the minimum. So we're gonna be doing a negative value and then a positive value. And that graph would look like this. I think I want to say x equals a, x equals a. And we're decreasing first. Right here we're decreasing and then we're increasing. Right, so these sign diagrams that you learned how to do previously are going to really help us again in determining a local maximum and a local minimum. Now, a stationary inflection is just where the graph changes whether or not it's facing concave down or concave up. So what do I mean by that? So this is concave down, and this part of the curve, I'll highlight it in blue, is concave up, right? So we're, we're going up here, and for this one, we're down. So let's see what that looks like. Let's draw some diagrams here. Let me draw the diagram first to help you. So here's our point, x equals a, right? And we are, in this case, we're increasing, increasing, right? Oh, and I should make a note here that these sign diagrams are all representing our derivative. I say it here, but I just want to make a note here too. So if the derivative is a plus plus right in a row, we know that we have this type of scenario. All right, let's take a look at a different one. What if we change it and we say we have a negative negative at A? So we have decreasing. That's going to look like this. Again, that's x equals a. And this whole graph is decreasing. All right, so that's what we're talking about, the shape of the curve. It's either changing in concavity like I said, this is concave down, this is concave up, this is concave up, this is concave down, or we just have a local minimum or a maximum. So we're gonna look at two example problems, sort of break this down. The first thing that we need to do, and we're gonna follow the directions in the boxes to the left, is find the derivative and draw the sign diagram. So the derivative of this, Three times a third gives us one. I planned that so nice. So we get x squared minus nine. And we're gonna set x squared minus nine equal to zero. And we're gonna factor that guy. That's the difference of two squares. So we're gonna get x equals plus or minus three. Or you could have solved it this way, x squared equals nine take the square root of both sides, and then you're gonna get x equals plus or minus three. Either way is perfectly fine. We're gonna set up our sign diagram, negative three comes before three. We're gonna look at the derivative, we're gonna use test values before three. 
between negative 3 and 3, and after 3. All right, and just as a reminder, you know, you, you, you're welcome to use your calculator when we do these. This one's not that hard, but I would say negative 4 store x, and then I would type out my derivative, and I get a value of 7. If I put 0 in there, we're, we're going to get negative 9. And if I put 4 in there, I'm going to get 7. And all we really care about, again, with these is, is it positive? Is it negative? What is the sign of those test values when we put them into the derivative? So we've got a positive number, we have a negative number, and we have a positive number. So that means we are increasing, decreasing, increasing. So let's find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. So we have our very nicely done sine diagram. We know that we are increasing where x is less than or equal to negative 3 and x is greater than or equal to 3. And we are decreasing where x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 3. Now it says find and classify stationary points. This part is new. So we want to look at the side diagram. And if you notice, we have two scenarios here. We have a plus minus. So, you know, if we go back to our page previously here, if we have a plus minus, that means we have a local maximum. And then we have a minus plus, right? And a minus plus, if you go back to this page, means we have a local minimum. So we're going to make notes about that in this box. Let's see here. So we've got two scenarios where we've got plus minus and at three we have minus plus. All right, so let me just highlight that for you. I'm looking at this scenario here, and I'm looking at this scenario here. And then we're going to make notes about what that means. That means we have a local max here because we increase, and then we increase, and then we decrease. So that's a local max. And this guy, we decrease, and then we increase. So that means we have a local min. So we know that the coordinate is negative 3 something and 3 something. Now here's where kids can often get confused. We want to know for the actual graph, if I put negative 3 into my graph, right, my actual graph, what, what am I talking about? When I put negative 3 into this function, what value do I get? And I'm going to use my calculator to do that. So I'm going to use my store feature again. Negative 3 store x. And I'm going to type out the original function, which was 1 third x cubed minus 9x plus 4 and hit enter. Because I want to know what is the actual point on the graph at x equals negative 3, because I know there's a maximum there. So I get an output value of 22. So 22, oops, 22 is my coordinate of my local maximum. Now I want to know what is the actual point on the graph where I have a local minimum? Well, I know it happens at x equals 3. So I'm going to store 3 into x, second, enter, second, enter, enter, and I get negative 14. So I know that my local minimum is occurring at 3, negative 14. Okay, that's very helpful to me when I sketch my graph. Looking at n behavior, right, what is happening to the graph as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. So 
based on our sign diagram, right, we said that we increase, then we decrease, then we increase. I'm just going to draw that, just makes me feel a little bit better. I'll mark it up here, right? We have increase, we have decrease, we have increase. How did I get that? I looked at my sign diagram. My sign diagram says I have increase, decrease, increase. Increase, decrease, increase. So now I know exactly how my, my graph is behaving on the ends of the graph. So as x approaches positive infinity, so as x moves left, right, as x goes left, we're increasing. We're approaching positive infinity. And as x goes right, as x approaches negative infinity, as I go this way, my graph is pointing down, right? Here's my graph pointing down as I go to the left. So I know I'm approaching negative infinity. And I and doing this little step helps me, you know, reminds me of what my graph will look like when I do my final sketch. So it says sketch the graph showing the features you have found. All right, now I'm just, it's not gonna be to scale at all. I'm gonna plot my maximum and my minimum. And um, I don't have any other points to plot, right? I don't have an inflection point. This is what I have. So I'm just going to plot those two points. So let's see here. I'm going to mark it out. Three. We don't have to get too fancy. It's not going to be to scale. I know that I need a Y value of 22. And I need a Y value of negative 14. And I'm going to plot those points. So I've got negative 322. All right, and I have a maximum, a local maximum. You don't have a global maximum. This is just relative to this graph. We have a local maximum. And then we have a local minimum at 3, negative 14. And I know that my graph goes doot, doot, doot. Right, so that's what I want to do. I'll just, you know, I'm going to basically... Do something like that, all right? Let me do that for real now. So we're gonna do, hmm, we're not really sure where we cross, we're not worrying about it. And that's the, as much as we can do with what we've, you know, mapped out for this particular problem. All right, what I would suggest is pausing the video and trying example two, and when you're ready, you know, click on pause and, and keep it going. All right, so I'm gonna do number two. I'm gonna find the derivative. Oops. Use the thinner pen so I can fit more in this little box. All right, I'm gonna factor out a negative six. little baby factoring there. Two numbers that multiply to negative three but add to positive to negative two. Solve for x. So we know that our critical values are negative one and three. We're going to evaluate our derivative before negative one between negative one and three and after three, use your calculator. I get negative 30, 18, and negative 30. So I get negative, positive, negative. So I get decreasing, increasing, decreasing. My increasing intervals for this problem are negative one, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to three, decreasing, x is less than or equal to negative one, x is greater than or equal to three, all right, increasing is right here, decreasing, we're happening here and here. Find and classify any stationary points. If we look at our graph, we have a scenario where we do minus plus at negative one. 
and we do plus minus at three. So we do decreasing, increasing. So we know we have a uh, local min. And then this guy, we do increasing, decreasing. So that means we have a local max. All right. Now the local min is happening at negative one. And the local max is happening at three. So I need to know the actual coordinate on the function at negative one and three. So I'll use my calculator. Store negative one into x, type out the function. Oops. All right, I get negative 17, and I also need to know what the value is at 3. And at 3, the value is 47, so let me fill in my coordinates. So negative 1, negative 17, and 3, 47. And with this graph, we are decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Right, decrease, increase, decrease. So we want to know as x approaches positive infinity, as we go this way, right, what's happening at the end of the graph, at the very end of the graph as we go this way, which way are we pointing? We're pointing down, so we know we're at negative infinity. When we go as x approaches negative infinity, so when we go this way on the graph, which way is the graph pointing? The graph is pointing up, so we know we're approaching positive infinity. All right, now we know what the shape of the graph is. We have a local max, we have a local min. All right, we're going to plot those points. All right, we have a point at negative 1, negative 17. We have a point at 3, 47. Again, it, <clears throat> we're not worried about this graph being to scale. We're just trying to do the general idea here. And we know that our graph, if we look at our sketch here, right, has that shape. So we're going to go whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's do it for real. You have to make the whoop sound. It makes it more fun. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Arrows on the end. We want to label this as our local min. And this is our local max. Because if we examine this graph further, we may find other minimums and maximums. So relative to this graph, we have a local minimum and a local maximum. All right, that's everything I have for this lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, you know, Keep working, keep doing a great job, and I'm very proud of you, and I'll see you next time.